G'day. I'm here to talk to you today about Rust in OpenSUSE and how we manage the Rust programming language. My name is William Brown. I'm a senior software engineer here at SUSE Labs in Australia. My time zone is UTC plus 10, so the best way to get in contact with me if you have any questions is via email, which is wbrown at SUSE.de. So what is the purpose of an operating system these days, such as a Linux distribution? Well, it's to give you a platform to run applications on, and for us, in a way, to distribute applications to you. And it's really important for us to give you, you know, well-tested and secure applications so that you can have something that you can rely on for your work every day. That's our job. And how do we get these to you? Well, we split everything up into packages and we ship them off to you. These packages can be anything from Firefox to LS. These package managers, of course, have evolved over time, like everything to do with technology. See, C was the programming language of choice for developing operating systems in the past. And, you know, and to start with, these were all statically linked applications like LS and grep. But as C evolved, statically linking turned into dynamic linking. This was because space, such as hard drive space or RAM, was at a primary. And so by having dynamic libraries, you saved on the amount of resources that your program was consuming. But C as a language is fragile, and these dynamic links are very fragile. They make a weak promise as to what is exposed by any library. And these promises can be easily broken, which can cause applications to crash or other random uh, behaviors to occur, which is not a very good experience for you as a user. So our package managers evolved side by side with C to be able to help resolve this. And so our package managers, we split every library into its own package and then we give them versions. And our package managers do version resolution in order to make sure that all of the pieces will fit together. Linux distribution package managers really are the C language manager in a way. And of course, because of this you know, fragility, this also led to a culture of risk aversion and change aversion, so that we don't want to be updating C libraries through major versions because we might break something. And of course, when we kept factor in also just, you know, C as a programming language has, a, you know, tends to promote having a lot of vulnerabilities. 70% of security defects are because of memory unsafety issues. And this was reported by both Microsoft and Google. You know, and because of the fact that the C programming language has this tendency to be insecure, you know, when you combine this with the version and change a version that exists because of the fragility of C libraries, you know, this makes for a community culture where patching and backporting things and keeping version like a single version of an application alive for a long time was, you know, the way that things were done. And our Linux distribution package managers have really evolved hand in hand with these ideals. Other languages, however, have evolved since C, though. These are things like Rust, Go, Python, Ruby, and all of these have learnt their own individual and unique lessons from the past. Static linking, for example, is back, and this is because, you know, space, like hard drive space, is less of a, con less of a resource limit today. You know, and languages like Rust especially have their own built-in library and resolution manager to make sure that everything works. Of course, these communities are also extremely online. And because they're extremely online, they tend to update all the time. And these communities don't tend to backport and patch. They'll update their libraries and expect their, their consumers to also be updating frequently as well. And this is possible because of that really nice strong type system, but also the fact that you know, the compile time checks that are performed means that we can have a lot more assertions about the fact that our applications will or won't build before we even get them shipped via a package onto a consumer's um, machine. Of course, as Rust grows, it's going to be used in more and more applications, so distributions will start to package it. And we've already seen the fact that distributions will package Rust as though it's, you know, as though it's C. And so we end up with every single library, and in fact every possible feature variant of a library, being split into its own individual package and being resolved through the distribution package manager. Of course, as Rust developers, we're probably very surprised or shocked by this. That, and we feel like our distributions are holding Rust wrong or working against us. It's also not the first time that this has happened either. You know, this has had negative impacts on other programming language communities on the past when you know, package managers have tried to push their own ideals onto a programming language. It also raises the barrier to contribution to our distributions um, by making the process far more complicated. 
So in 2021, I became the maintainer of Rust in OpenSUSE and SUSE. And as a result, after seeing this, I decided to step back and you know, really think, rethink some of these ideas. But I didn't just want my ideas. I wanted to hear what many people wanted. And so I ran uh, a survey for users and you know, to get their feedback about what they wanted. And it was really fantastic to see how many people actually contributed to and responded to this survey. You know, not just from OpenSUSE or Linux distributions, but Mac users and Windows users, Windows users as well. And it's so good to have all of their inputs so that we can create a more consistent experience across different operating systems, giving you more choice. So overwhelmingly, one of the things that was interesting was that, you know, as developers, you don't want to be using the Rust toolchain that comes with your distribution. You want to be using Rust up and using the upstream toolchain. And that's really interesting. But what about libraries? You know, when you're building an application and you're developing something, where do you want to be getting your libraries from? Well, you overwhelmingly want to be getting things from crates.io and this applies to both packaged applications and applications running in containers or in you know your own private business context or private usage the classic counter argument however to vendoring or bundling app libraries like rust does though is you can't apply security patches without dynamic libraries but again, this argument, you know, comes back to what we were talking about before, where 70% of those defects are because of memory unsafety. It assumes a high number of security issues in the first place, which Rust eliminates a lot of these, not all, but a lot, just through the, the way that it is a memory safe language. And this is fantastic because it already shifted the bar much higher. We also have a really security aware community and it's a testament to the Rust community and the people you know watching this talk is how engaged you are with security. 80% of respondents indicated that they were using cargo order or cargo outdated to make sure that all of their libraries were continually being updated and secured. Of course, we as a distribution also need to be able to respond to security issues. And when we're vendoring our libraries in, we actually need to be able to go through those. So we can take our RPMs and what we've been distributing in the past, we can unpack them and scan them with tools like Cargo Audit, the same tools that you're using. And when we detect a security issue, we can actually then go through and re-vendor and update our libraries in order to resolve those security problems. We can also work through with this process to make sure that we can target specific RustSec IDs in case there is a high you know, security incident that we need to respond to rapidly. But it takes a long time to rebuild. It's a waste of time in CPU and it's slow. You're having to do rebuild all these vended applications all the time. Well, yes, it might be. But how about we address the reasons why it's slow instead of you know, making excuses? First, there are less security issues in Rust as already addressed, as already mentioned, which means that there's going to be less time spent patching, less time spent backporting, less time rebuilding, and that means more time for doing the things that you love. And of course, the second issue being, you know, if Rust compile times are slow, well, let's speed that up. There's already been amazing efforts to improve the speed of the Rust compiler in the community, but also we as a build service can use tools like SC Cache to improve rebuild times. We've actually integrated SCKH with our build services so that Rust packages in OpenSUSE can use and consume SCKH. So we can actually rebuild the entire Rust um, language toolchain um, in five minutes, down from two hours on an initial build. If anyone at Mozilla is, who works on SCKH is watching this talk, please get in contact with me. I have some patches that can improve performance by four times on large machines, and I've had some problems with getting in touch on the um, GitHub, so I'd really love to be able to talk with you about getting these contributed. So what does the process look like now for you if you were using OpenSUSE today as a developer? Well, you can just use our package manager, Zipper, and install Rust up. That's it. And you can use Rust up exactly the same way you would if you were using curl pipe. In fact, you can still use that. And we might even be one of the only distributions that actually encourage you to use Rust up rather than our own package tool chains. Our package tool chains, we consider them to be part of say a container build pipeline or for the use of the distribution internally. What about being a packager though? What does it look like if you wanted to contribute your application onto a distribution like OpenSUSE? Well, now all you need to do is edit uh, the spec file, which is what's used to generate the package, 
edit a metadata service file and you know run the services and these services will automatically do the cargo vendor for you they'll run cargo audit for you and then you know bundle that all up into a vendor tarball and then you can just build it and it's very very um, easy process and really approachable and this means you can go from nothing to a packaged rust application for a distribution in less than an hour you know it's basically getting down into speed run strats here and this is really fantastic because you know the Rust community is all about empowering people and that's the attitude that I brought in here was how can we lower the barriers of contribution to OpenSUSE but while still making sure that people are you know enabled to be able to make secure decisions and actually provide secure applications to our users. And this is fantastic because you know I think that Rust has a really strong future in Linux distributions, not just in terms of applications, but also the fact that even the Linux kernel is considering using Rust in the future. As a distribution, we really need to start to shift our focuses away from libraries and parts and building blocks and start to focus on applications and how we distribute applications to our users. You know, and, and I think, you know, since I spoke last here, uh, late last year, we had about 50 packages in OpenSUSE that were depending on Rust. Now, about six months later, we have more than 100, which is fantastic to see that kind of growth and adoption um, within our distribution. And I really feel like it's, you know, such an endorsement of, you know, working with the community rather than against them. But of course, this wouldn't be possible just on my own. There are so many people that have helped to support me um, with this uh, process. So I really want to thank Luke Jones for trusting me to take over Rust in OpenSUSE, Jim McDonough for his support as my manager, Alberto Planas Domaguez and Martin Searinghouse for helping with Rust ownership inside of SUSE, Perry Bolton for her assistance with creating the Rust uh, OpenSUSE survey, Johannes Segitz and Matthias Gersner for, you know, from SUSE Product Security who helped review all of these processes and make sure that what we were doing was actually going to be something that we could, you know, trust and secure and, you know, really endorse and stand behind. And of course the OpenSUSE community for really embracing Rust and, you know, wanting to package and distribute applications, especially Sock Vanilla Stella and George Craft who have both done quite a bit with Rust um, in the community. So, and of course, I'd really like to thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this talk. And I hope you enjoy the rest of RustConf.